Why Mainstream Media Falls Hash March 2 Parliament, Jim Spire While social media is doing much of what mainstream media used to do, certainly mainstream media remains very important. There are things that, even with all its provisions and strengths, social media can't do. It should therefore concern us that many mainstream media houses are struggling to survive amidst losses and staff demotivation. The salaries of NBS that were leaked recently could have been a laughing matter, but there was more about them for us to see and ponder. Journalists I've talked to said that actually the NBS salaries we saw are generally high in Uganda's media landscape. Journalists are generally paid poorly, yet they have existential financial needs like everyone else. Worse still, in many cases, the small salaries are also delayed. Even houses like New Vision are struggling. Many staff have been laid off, others are hanging in anxiety over who will be axed next. Their newsroom is turning into a ghost space with many empty desks, not only due to the recent infestation there with bedbugs. Ironically, at New Vision, the top boss's salaries are in the skies, far above the toiling reporters with pressure of filing more and more stories to cover for the staffing gaps left by downsizing. Little wonder that today many journalists have to be facilitated by the hosts to cover news events, which terribly compromises them. You see them running about with broken shoes and cutting streams of sweat with their palms, to appease their facilitators. They'll even ask the host what to cover and how. It's also not surprising, perhaps in the most extreme of cases, that at places like Parliament, they now operate more like a castrated PR team of the House. Hungry journalists turned into beggars and bag carriers totally lose the gist of their calling. But that's where many have been pushed to, journalists for hire, defending glaring wrongs without blinking. The other media dilemma is that they need adverts for revenue. But adverts can as well be a tool of compromise. Many multinationals in Uganda get away with their mischief because they are big advertisers. Where do so you report Mountain, Airtel, Coca-Cola? Consider also that government is the biggest advertiser. During the hashtag Uganda Parliament exhibition, NBS came under tough scrutiny for being soft on Parliament, specifically on the Speaker. We shouldn't forget though that the TV, and not government's UBC, gets huge revenue from running live Parliament sessions. What did we expect? So you have to give it to media outlets that can still resist these temptations and retain a semblance of independence despite threats to their survival. NBS certainly tries too. I've seen some newspapers running without any significant adverts. It should concern us how they survive, because revenue from sales is negligible. Some time back, URN was at the verge of closing. The Observer has been limping for a while. Monitor is not in very good financial shape. Radio seems to somehow survive due to some peculiarities in audience, but not really healthy. Certainly they all need to innovate more for survival. But also, for the health of our democracy, we might need to think more into their sustainability beyond their means.